Hello, collective. Welcome to the full moon in Pisces. My name is Marlene, the modern mystic and your resident moon goddess. Thank you so much for supporting these reports and for always, you know, either showing up here live through Zoom or watching the replay later. I always get such great feedback about these reports and I just want to tell you how grateful I am about that and how much I thank you for tuning in and supporting me and the collective and yourselves. Um, I try to make this advice. I know that astrology could be complicated, but I really want to acknowledge those people who have stuck with it and really tried to understand it. And not only that, but apply it to their lives, because that is my intention for these reports that you can grab you know, one, two, three nuggets from what I share with you and apply it into your personal development. So this one, this full moon in Pisces is going to help us really tune into our emotions. And when I say emotions, I want to be clear that I'm talking about emotions that are conscious to us and emotions that are not un that are not conscious or unconscious to us. So let's begin by um, letting you know what time this full moon happened. It happened at, well, it hasn't happened yet, actually. I thought this was a.m., but no, it is actually happening tonight at 9.36 p.m. So we're going to have probably a super bright moon tonight. Um, so maybe go outside and soak in the new moonlight because really I want to start off by saying that any full moon rituals today or ceremonies that have to do with any kind of specific manifestation, I wouldn't, and I'm going to tell you why in the report, but I would just keep it really cute, hang out with the moon tonight, um, do some visualization, do some dream work, get really yummy and comfortable with your feels and keep it really light because this moon is conjunct Saturn in Pisces and it's sobering that Pisces energy a little bit. It's kind of bringing us, I don't want to say down because I feel like Saturn always gets a bad rap, you know, and Saturn is really here to teach us a lot of things. And what I mean by sobering Pisces is that Pisces is boundless and, and dreamy and spiritual and out there and beyond our understanding sometimes. And Saturn is the father of time, the one that brings us down to reality. When, when I say reality, it's like the 3D, right, where we are bound by time. And Pisces and Saturn don't always, you know, see eye to eye. But what Saturn is trying to do is really, you know, bring us down to um, the reality around that our emotions may not have been rooted in truth, that there may have been illusions that we are seeing until the, you know, light of this full moon where we have had to have reality checks around relationships maybe or about things emotions that have been hidden to you or to others that have now come to light and you know this is this is that kind of sobering vibe that I'm talking about because you know when you think you're seeing something a certain way and all of a sudden you realize that it's another way that it's something else completely that could have a big emotional impact on us. And I want us to get real, real comfortable with those feelings. And whatever feelings may be coming up, you know, whether you can name them or not, I want you to honor them. I want you to, I ask you, I invite you to honor them as they come up because they are here to be released with this full moon. Pisces is the end of a cycle. It's the last sign of the zodiac. So 
with Pisces, we really get to release what is no longer working for us. And it's, you know, it, it, we will have to get creative about the way we do it. And, you know, Pisces is all about creativity and art and music and, and really connecting to the deep subconscious, you know. But we really have an opportunity to finally leave a certain story behind. Finally leave a certain narrative behind, a certain situation behind, a certain relationship behind. And I feel like a lot of us are going to be touching around the themes of relationships. And, you know, whether you're in an intimate relationship or you're single, where I'm talking about all relationships, friendships, partnerships, business partnerships, you know, um, let's not pin it down to an intimate relationship. But somehow, some way, we'll be looking at like the spiritual side of something and the like 3D side of it. And both things can be true at the same time. But those two things sometimes may not mesh, may not correlate. And this is where some of us are finding ourselves in certain relationships. To top it off, there are seven planets in retrograde right now. Just to like, you know, put a little icing to the cake. And that just makes things, to be very blunt, a whole shitload of more confusion. And really the personal planets like Venus and Mercury are the ones that really affect us on a day-to-day. -day. But those outer planets can get wonky too and can really start bringing in a lot of lessons for the long term. And when we're talking about Saturn, which again is conjunct to this moon, meaning it's very, very close to this moon, either right next to it, right on top of it, or within five degrees of this moon. Um, it's having a conversation with this moon about, hey, it's really good to have your dreams. It's really good to have your 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 beliefs and, you know, not wanting to be bound by any kind of rules. But wouldn't it be really cool to have some magical discipline in your life? Wouldn't it be really cool to take all of this delicious spirituality that you feel and really funnel it down into this time and space. And whatever that looks like for you, allow yourself to visualize, bring that up with this full moon. The ruling planet of Pisces is Neptune. So when you look at Neptune in this chart at the time of the full moon, it is in retrograde opposing Mars in Libra. Libra, again, another relationship sign. So illusions around relationships, again, seeing what isn't there, but now you see it dissolving any perceived kind of truths that are not founded in any kind of reality, meaning this time and space, or being attached to certain outcomes that are not going to look that way. And let's say overly attached. So have those things present. I want you to write them down. You know, sometimes we write down a lot of affirmations and things like that, but we forget what to be cautious around. And I'm not saying that, you know, we should like, you know, focus on the negative or anything. But sometimes like, like this is the reason why we go over these things so that you can apply caution, right? And it happens to me, like, I'll give you this report and then I'll go out and do exactly what I like told you guys not to do. It's like so funny, you know, because I'm in this space when I'm talking to you right now where 
I'm channeling. I'm half here and I'm channeling as well. So I'll go and like make freaking human mistakes and not listen to myself because I didn't like note it. So I really want you to note the fact that certain illusions are going to be dissolving maybe in front of you. And I want you to keep your nervous system regulated while these things are happening because we spoke about it already. Because you had it in mind already. And if it's happening in front of you, then let's move to resolution instead of freaking out about something we already spoke about. And this is around relationships and perceived outcomes of how you think certain relationships are to be. And they're just not like that. So magical discipline. And Mercury in retrograde is supporting this in Virgo. You know, um, this retrograde in Virgo is really about cleaning house, detoxing, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Start with one. And you'll see how the other ones will start catching up. Because if you detox physically, you will release other layers. So think about it. If you clean your closet, you are symbolically making space, which then energetically makes space inside of you. So get get really creative like these are the kind of rituals maybe that you can do around this full moon like maybe clean your closet or like decide that you're going to do a detox you know or, or decide that you're going to set up a worry basket i like this one this one we used we used to do in my shamanic clan and we would get a worry basket or a box or you know, you can get as elaborate as you want and, you know, decorate this box or decorate this basket with feathers and colors and and just however you want it to look. And we would put our worries in there. We would write them down in a piece of paper and put our worries in there. So they no longer took up space or mental uh, space and they were there, and you can pick them up whenever you want. They're not going anywhere, but they're outside of you. Those are the kind of ceremonies or rituals that I encourage for you to do around this full moon. Avoid any kind of manifestation ritual, again, or spell work. Anything that gets too specific. There's too many planets in retrograde. It's confusing. Things will get lost in translation. Details will be missed. It's just not a good idea. There are other moons that are much more favorable for that kind of work. But keep it cute for this. Keep it light. A little self-help can come in handy as well. Like self-care. Some a ritualistic bath. Boom. Pisces. Right? So think about it. Get creative. Music. You know, play music if you're musically inclined. Do art. Transmute and transform in those ways where you're, you know, allowing yourself to let go. Now, revelations may be happening around what Venus in retrograde in Leo has been trying to show you. Um which, by the way, it's over September 3rd. And this transit is now bringing in revelations about relationships or, you know, what it's been trying to show you around finances or creative projects. Any questions and doubts about any of these things that you've had may be coming in during the illumination of this full moon. Now, remember, a full moon, we're feeling the effects three days before and three days after. So, you know, allow yourself to stay present. Um, it could be dramatic. It could not. Like, it could be something super simple. It could be perceived as bad or it could be perceived as good. Like, there's really um, no 
kind of rule around this. Things are the way they are. And if the revelations are something that you need to know, but it's harsh for you to confront, then that's what we're going to have to deal with. And it's good to sit with your feelings, maybe do meditation around certain things so that you can remove yourself out of the way and allow the flow of life to just kind of go through you. It's us that makes everything complicated. And we are just allow things to flow if we don't interrupt. But that's life. That's that's being a human being. We come with traumas. These are the lessons that we have to learn. So a lot of grace. But after September 3rd, I do want you to take note not to overspend, not to overdo it, not to overexert yourself or overcommit. Sometimes when a Venus in retrograde that's been like this kind of wonky energy goes direct, we may feel such a release that we're like, yeah, let's go, let's shop, let's indulge, right? So try, or you may be saying yes to a lot of things and then all of a sudden you're overcommitted and you're like overdoing it. So keep in mind September 3rd, um, you know, things are going to be moving forward with relationships, you know, stay mutable, stay open, allow, tend to your emotions, notice your dreams again, prayer, prayer is a good practice, whatever that means to you, whether it comes in affirmations or in, you know, actual prayers, like However, it is that you connect to the divine. It's a really, really good time to do that. And, you know, turn your back or abandon any kind of emotional situation that is not fulfilling, that is draining you. This is the time to release. These are the kinds of things to release during this full moon. You know, um, Deal with what's right in front of you. Take the next step. Don't go too far. And just deal with what's right in front of you. Because it's probably a lot. All of us are dealing with a lot of shit. We all are. You know, I, I sit with women every day. And this is coming from all of us just in different areas of our lives and different themes. You are not alone if you're going through a hard time right now or if you're stressed out or if you're overwhelmed. You know, it's a labor of love to deal with these things the way that you can. And that looks different for all of us. Some of us can take on a little bit more right now. Some of us can only deal with one thing at a time. Whatever that is, that's in front of you. Confront it with presence. And be here and now while you're doing it. Magical discipline. I want you to take that phrase with you. Because, you know, unless we ground this magic that we feel and that we, you know, visualize we won't get to enjoy it here and now. And that's what it's all about. We're not waiting for later to enjoy the fruits. You know, we want to take them as they come, to harness them and bring them here to earth, to your space and time so that you can enjoy them and you can share them with your family and your friends and the people that you love. So... Allow yourself, you know, to remain open, again, remain flexible. I allow yourself to release and let go of those things that really, really don't fulfill you emotionally. Like, it's not working for me emotionally. Oh, I didn't do anything to you. You're right. You don't have to be dramatic about it. You don't have to even tell people that you are registering your relationships or taking a position. 
do what you need to do to bring the right energy to you. And remember, it's a labor of love to take care of you. And with Aries being in the North Node for the next 18 months, what that means is that it is time for us to individualize, to self-preserve, even when we're in relationship, to not overgive or overcommit just because we're in relationship. It's time to take our power back. And for each of us, that's different. But the time is now. The time is now. So you use the light of this full moon collective to really release what no longer serves you and make space for magical discipline. Because that's the kind of practice that's going to bring you the life that you desire right now. So big, big hug. So, so much love. I am offering right now a astro transit reading. This is the last week that I'm going to be offering it. And basically, we sit down and we talk about the current transits that are happening right now. And we compare them to your natal chart, which means the map, right? The the placement of the stars and the cosmos, the moment that you were born and the location that you were born, the time that you were born. And we put that with the current transits now and we see what areas of your life are going to be affected. And that is a reading that I'm offering until this Sunday. Um, like you can obviously book it you know, in the future, but it's coming off of my website this Sunday. So if you're interested in that, send me a DM on Mighty Networks or find me on Instagram at The Modern Mystique, or I will be posting it um, if you're in the collective and you're in Mighty Networks, I'll be posting it with the Moon Report so that you can find it there as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. So, so much love. I'll see you soon. Ciao.